Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. And a couple months ago I made a video called uh, No More Wi-Fi, How to Wire Your House for Internet. And in that video I explained how to buy Ethernet switches and cables. And you run the cables everywhere, you plop some switches everywhere, you can get rid of your Wi-Fi and have a 100% reliable gigabit uh, hardwired network. Now, uh, several people actually responded and they said, well, what about uh, Powerline Ethernet? Uh, what about Mocha? And so I want to talk a little bit about uh, those two options today. Now, Powerline Ethernet is basically, uh, you have uh, two adapters that look a little bit something like this. And what you do is you plug one in a power outlet somewhere in your house and another one somewhere else in your house. And into those two adapters, you plug Ethernet cables. And what it does is it actually uses the electrical wiring of your house as essentially an Ethernet cable. Uh, it, it doesn't use the same frequencies as Ethernet. It sort of takes the Ethernet signals and kind of like remodulates them and sends them. Uh, the frequency band I think they use is 30 to 86 megahertz and it sends signals over the actual electrical wiring of your house. And so what that means is you don't actually have to drill holes through the floor and that sort of thing. Uh, anywhere you have a power outlet, you have essentially a, a, a node on your home network. Um, now this uh, Powerline Ethernet, it comes in various flavors. Uh, it's gotten a lot better over the years. Currently you can spend about 30 bucks and get a couple uh, little adapters and uh, that'll be like uh, 500 megabits per second, half a gigabit. That's obviously half the speed of gigabit Ethernet. Um, there's also 1200 megabits and even uh, 2000 megabits or 2 gigabits. And the 2 gigabit modules, you can buy two of them for $100. So it's not cheap. Typically, you do want to go with um, name brand, kind of higher quality uh, power line Ethernet, Ethernet adapters. But um, the question is, how, what does this actually look like when you use it? Because it's sort of, it's kind of a nebulous concept. So let's take a look at how you would actually wire your house up if you're using power line Ethernet adapters. So here we have our house and we have various gizmos that we want to wire up. Now you'll notice we have a laptop in the bedroom in the upper left hand corner. Uh, we have a home office upstairs with a smartphone and, a, and a, a computer. We have a laptop in another bedroom and downstairs in the family room we have a TV, tablet, smartphone and laptop and the big red arrow in the center uh, on the little table at the bottom of the stairs. That guy is our actual, uh, say it's a Wi-Fi router, it's the box that, that our, our internet service provider has given us. And so that red arrow, that's everything in the house needs to be connected to that guy. Now, if you watch the first video, you will see that this is the solution that we actually came up with. You have to put a couple Ethernet switches, one upstairs, one downstairs. You have to run Ethernet cables to every one of your devices. You have to connect the switches and computers and everything all together to your ISP's box. And boom. But as you'll notice, that means you have to run one, two, three cables uh, between rooms, through walls, uh, up through the ceiling. And of course, that's not exactly convenient. So with Powerline Ethernet adapters, uh, basically you can see we have uh, these, these little yellow boxes and what those are is our Powerline Ethernet adapters and those would be plugged into a simple power socket in the wall of your home. So we've put five of them there, one in various rooms, and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect each of the Powerline Ethernet adapters to uh, a gizmo one of them in the center of the house, one of them is going to be connected to our ISP's box. Uh, in the, the family room to the right, one of them is going to be connected to an Ethernet switch, and then of course all the gizmos get connected to the Ethernet switch, and so on and so forth. So here you can see we still need two switches, but we need far fewer Ethernet cables, and we're actually using the power lines as part of our network. So here you can see the pink lines are of course Ethernet cables, and the dashed yellow lines that's actually now part of our network. That would be the dashed yellow lines are actually the electrical wiring of your home that are carrying these signals through the electrical wiring so that you don't have to run lots of ethernet cables. So this seems like a pretty good solution, right? I mean, you don't have to drill holes and blah, blah, blah. Well, it does actually seem like a pretty good solution, but here we are looking at Netgear's website and they have this model called the Powerline 2000 uh, plus extra outlet. And as you can see, you just plug the guy in and, and at the bottom you have uh, two Ethernet ports and as we just demonstrated, it's, it's pretty cool, right? So then on the page we scroll down and we look at the technical specs and it says Powerline performance 2000 megabits per second. Well, that's 2 gigabits per second. 
and we have one gigabit Ethernet port, right? So that seems like it would be better than Ethernet. But you have to read the fine print, because if you look down at the bottom, it says, Maximum wireless signal rate derived from IEEE standard, blah, blah, blah. Actual data throughput and data over distance will vary. Network conditions and environmental factors, including volume of network traffic, building material and construction, and network overhead result in lower actual data throughput uh, and coverage, blah, blah, blah. Uh, outlets must be electrically connected in order for power line devices to provide a network connection between them. Okay, so power line networking seems like it's a good idea, but even on Netgear's website for the expensive model, the one that's $100 for a pair of them, um, they very clearly state that, yeah, it's you're not going to get 2 gigabits per second. And the reason for that is, as I said, uh, the, the power line Ethernet adapters are taking the Ethernet signals, they're remodulating them, they're sending it over electrical wiring in, your, in the walls of your house at between 30 and 86 megahertz. Now, the problem is that Ethernet cables are four twisted pairs of wires. It's thin little wires and they're twisted together and there's four pairs of them. And the reason they do that is because then you have good signal integrity and you have immunity from interference and blah, blah, blah. The, the actual electrical wiring in your house, it's probably something like Romex, where it's just like three solid wires in parallel, and of course it's routed all over the place in the walls. That kind of wiring is ideal for carrying 50 or 60 hertz electricity for powering gizmos, but it's not ideal for carrying high frequency signals. So the two things that happen are the power line Ethernet adapters are injecting these frequencies, this the data essentially, over your house wiring, and um, first of all, the electrical wiring of your house will actually act as an antenna and radiate some of those frequencies out, uh, which means, of course, that the speed and the reliability of the power line networking connection drops. And the second problem is that the power lines of your house will again act as an antenna, but receiving interference from the outside. Maybe your neighbor has power line networking, maybe your neighbor is like a ham radio operator. Um, there's all kinds of different things and different factors that come into play. Um, where basically this, the speed of the power line networking connection drops and is never actually at maximum. One thing to note is modern power line networking adapters, they have these fancy schemes where uh, basically you have your 30 to 86 megahertz range usually, and it's going to use some of those frequencies. And so what it'll do is it'll try and detect on the power lines in your house, uh, you know, do, am I receiving interference here? Is there a problem here? And if so, it'll sort of ignore that band of the frequencies and it'll use the band up here instead. Uh, again, that's going to potentially slow down a little bit and you're not going to get the full one gigabit or two gigabit speed. The other thing to consider is that power line networking adapters, uh, they have security built in. Typically they use 128-bit AES encryption. Uh, that's not the greatest, but it's okay, and usually what you'll do is you'll plug two gizmos in and they, they usually have a button you press and they automatically sort of negotiate with each other uh, because the data needs to be encrypted. Because obviously if uh, you're sending these data signals over the electrical wiring of your house and it's radiating out kind of like a radio antenna, then someone else could pick up on that. They could sort of spy on you just like you can do with Wi-Fi if it's not encrypted. Um, so the security, it's probably okay. That's really not uh, a major factor. Um, the big problem is that, uh, based on everything I just said, when they say it's, say, 500 megabits, uh, you'll be lucky if you get maybe half that speed. Uh, when they say it's 1.2 gigabits, you'll be lucky if you get maybe six or 700 megabits. And if they say you go for the expensive Netgear option, you pay 100 bucks, you get two of these modules, two of these Ethernet adapters, you plug them into your power outlets, you're supposed to get two gigabits per second, and you'll be lucky if you get one gigabit per second. Furthermore, if you have to buy like five of these things, um, you're looking at um, $250 just to use the power lines of your house uh, for networking. So it's maybe not quite so economical after all. The next option are what is called Mocha adapters, commonly called Mocha. Mocha is the Multimedia Over Coax Alliance. And essentially what that is, is uh, you may notice you have a, a jack like this with a cable going into it. That's a coaxial cable jack. And many houses these days, they have coax run over, run all over the entire house. And in various rooms and bedrooms and family room, you have coax jacks. And that's typically for cable TV. All of those jacks are all connected together. Uh, sometimes you have something like direct TV and you can use that to send, um, you know, TV channels to every room. 
Uh, it's also very often used for uh, cable-based internet, where you'll, you can have internet and other multimedia services in every room of your house. So in order to do Ethernet over coax, you need two of these guys. This is a Motorola Mocha adapter. It's about $69, I think. And obviously you use it the same as the Powerline Ethernet adapter, but instead of using power outlets, you're going to use a coax jack in one room, you put one of these boxes there, you get a coax jack in another room, you put another one of these boxes, you hook Ethernet up to it, and it will send your data signal over the coax wiring that's in the walls of your house. So again, we go back to our little house here, and this time, uh, instead of power outlets, you're looking for coax jacks. So we have one, two, three, four, five of these Mocha boxes, and the yellow lines are coaxial cable in the back of the little coax adapter. You just uh, put a coaxial cable, plug it into the wall, the wall jack, and then of course, just like with the power line Ethernet adapters, the pink lines are Ethernet cables, so you're going to connect switches and other gizmos, and of course in the center of the house you need to have a coax jack, and then you run an Ethernet cable from the Mocha box to your ISP's box, and essentially what happens is you get this. And again, the pink lines are Ethernet cables, and you can see the Ethernet switches highlighted in pink, and then you have the coax jacks highlighted in yellow, and the dashed yellow line is uh, the coaxial cable that's already in the walls of your house. So just as with power line Ethernet, instead of using the electrical wiring of your house, in this case you're actually using the coax wiring. Now, these Mocha things are actually quite good, because coaxial cable is actually utterly brilliant. Electromagnetically speaking, it's totally like a nerd paradise. Um, it gets kind of hairy, but coaxial cable, the way that it conducts high-frequency signals, it, it's very immune to interference and um, things sort of cancel each other out. It's, it's technically very cool. Um, practically what that means for you is that uh, coaxial cable is actually much, much better than using the power lines in your house. Um, coaxial cable is designed to carry high-frequency signals. Um, in fact, the current standard, I think, is it's a Mocha 2.5 2 or something is the latest standard. Typically, if you hop on Amazon, you're going to find 2.0 standards, um, 2.0 standard devices. Those are um, minimum 1 gigabit per second. And unlike Powerline Ethernet networking, uh, the Mocha adapters where they use the coax, you're going to get 1 gigabit. It's, it's very reliable. Uh, it's very immune to interference. And if you have a choice between using Powerline Ethernet or these Mocha coax Ethernet adapters, definitely go with the coax ones. You can hook up to 16 of these Mocha adapters usually. There are a few catches. Uh, the first catch is that if you have cable TV, you can use these Mocha adapters, you're fine. Um, there are certain services such as uh, DirecTV, certain satellite TV services, AT&T Internet and AT&T Uverse. If those services are already using the coax network in your house, you may not be able to actually use the Mocha adapters because they're actually sending radio frequency signals over the coax that are going to conflict with these services. So you have to do a little bit of homework first to make sure that they're going to work. That's the first problem. And the second problem is, again, if you buy, say, these Motorola boxes, um, like I said, those are $69 each. You can get them cheaper for about $50 each. Again, if you have to put, uh, you know, five or six of these in various points in your house, if like it is in our example, we, we needed five of them, that's going to be minimum $250. So this is why I recommend running Ethernet cable everywhere, because first of all, the cost is lower. You can get a switch for, you know, $15, $20, a gigabit switch. Each port of the gigabit switch is dedicated one gigabit, which means you can have multiple computers, you know, sending files to each other, and each one gets one gigabit per second. Um, with Ethernet, there's no signal degradation. There's no interference. There's very little emissions, very little RF emissions from the cables and the switches. Uh, I've tested with a couple different meters. Um, it's inexpensive, it's reliable, uh, it's future-proof. As I mentioned in my earlier video, you can, in the future, if you run Category 7 cable or even Category 6, in the future, when they come out with 2.5 and 5 gigabit per second Ethernet, you can most likely just swap out the switches, and obviously you'll at that point, you'll have a newer computer that will probably support 2.5 or 5 gigabit per second Ethernet, and you don't have to redo all the wiring that you ran all over your house. Um, also, Ethernet is it's 100% secure. There's no there's no need for encryption. There's no need for because you know nothing is wireless. It's all hardwired together. 
Of course, Ethernet is probably slightly more expensive than Wi-Fi because if you're paying for your internet service provider, they give you a box, you have Wi-Fi, boom, you're done. You turn the Wi-Fi on and it's probably going to cover most of your house. Um, in that sense, an Ethernet network is slightly more expensive because you have to buy some Ethernet cables, you have to buy some switches. Uh, but again, y you don't need Wi-Fi anymore. Um, you don't have any, you know, you don't have any RF in your house. You have 100% network security, 100% reliability, absolute maximum speed. Um, especially like if you're a gamer, all gamers know, no, 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 you're supposed to use, don't use Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. You use a hardwired Ethernet connection. Uh, and that's why, because it's also very low latency. Um, it, it's just better. Now, I have to say that there are instances where, of course, you would want to use either the coax mocha adapters or some power line ethernet. Um, maybe you just need to get internet from upstairs to downstairs. You're renting a townhouse. You don't want to drill holes. Well, you can just get a couple of these adapters. You know, it might cost you a hundred bucks for a, for a good pair, but you put one upstairs, one downstairs. You hook it up as part of your wired ethernet network and boom, you just saved a whole lot of time. So there are instances where these things are very good, uh, but especially if you're in a house that you own, um, I still would vote for actual hardwiring and because the initial, the initial amount of work that you're gonna do, um, it's just better for reliability, speed, security, uh, and long-term cost is, is lower, so. Right, so that's the deal with power line ethernet adapters and Mocha coax adapters. Uh, for more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.